Damascus says Turkish-led forces have attacked its troops in northeastern Syria. State media said Turkish troops and allied fighters attacked Syrian army positions outside the town of Tal Tamar. Syrian government claims some of its troops were killed in the attack by Turkish-led forces. Moreover, Kurdish-led SDF forces said three of its fighters were also killed in fighting with Turkish-backed forces. Meanwhile, President Tayyip Erdogan has demanded the U.S. hand over YPG ringleader Muslim Abdi to Turkey. In a televised interview, he alleged some NATO countries armed terrorists who have posed a threat to the country for eight years. In an interview, in an interview Commander Abdi said his forces and the U.S. are discussing retaking positions in some areas of northeast Syria. The U.S. says it will redeploy its troops to Syrian oil fields to protect them from a takeover by ISIS. President Donald Trump has also hinted at a realignment with SDF forces to keep Syrian oil out of ISIS hands. Trump said he had a conversation with SDF commander Maslum Abdi and told him to advance towards the oil fields. He said one of the most significant gains by the U.S. in the fight against ISIS was gaining control of oil fields in eastern Syria. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said the Pentagon is preparing a plan to prevent Syrian oil from falling back into the hands of ISIS. Pentagon Chief Mark Esper has also advised Trump against a complete withdrawal of forces from the Middle Eastern country. At a NATO defense minister's meeting in Brussels, Germany has proposed a security zone in northern Syria. Defense Minister Annegret Kram Kronbauer presented the plan after backing from Turkey and the U.S. Karen Bauer said status quo is not a satisfactory solution to the Syrian conflict. NATO head Jen Stoltenberg says Berlin's plan for a security zone might need to involve the United Nations. Defense Minister Karen Bauer said the zone will serve as a safety parameter for returning Syrian refugees. She said the zone will also need Russia's presence to protect displaced civilians and ensure the fight against ISIS. But she told NATO defense ministers that patrolling the northeastern border could not fall to Russia and Turkey alone. Top Kurdish commander Maslum Abidi has thrown his weight behind the German-led plan. Meanwhile, Russian forces have started patrolling northeastern Syria. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says 2 million refugees will return to northern Syria after the establishment of a safe zone. Speaking in Ankara, he said Turkey will implement its own plans if Kurdish fighters don't withdraw from the area under the ceasefire deal with Russia. Meanwhile, Turkey's defense ministry says five Turkish soldiers were wounded in an attack by Kurdish fighters in the border town of Raselen. It said the attack was conducted using drones and mortars. But the Kurdish fighters accused Ankara of violating the truce by launching an offensive on three villages in northeast Syria. Saudi Arabia's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Abdel Adil al Jubair, says maximum pressure is the only way to bring Iran to the negotiating table. He was speaking in Paris ahead of talks with French officials as part of efforts to defuse tensions between Iran and the U.S. The minister says Iran's revolutionary guards don't want to negotiate. He also said Yemen's government and southern separatists must end their differences to counter Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. Al Jubair said Riyadh is facilitating talks between the two sides. In Ethiopia, 16 people have been killed in protests against Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Police said several officers were injured in clashes as protesters burnt tires and blocked roads. Police fired gunshots and tear gas to break up demonstrations. Protesters gathered outside opposition activist Jawar Muhammad's residence for the second consecutive day. Tensions rose in the country after Jawar accused security forces of an assassination attempt. In a press conference, Jawar appealed for calm while accusing authorities of stoking instability. He said the federal police have attempted to carry out a major crime in a way that endangers the entire country. Police have denied reports of removal of Jawar's security detail, leaving him vulnerable to attack. In Iraq, anti-government rallies have resumed in the second phase of protests that turned deadly earlier this month. 
Mass demonstrations against corruption and unemployment have claimed over 100 lives. Protesters gathered in Baghdad's Tahrir Square calling for the country's entrenched political class to be uprooted. A few dozen headed towards the high security green zone, which holds government offices and embassies. Security forces used water cannons to push them back. Other rallies erupted in southern cities of Divania and Nasiriya as demonstrations vowed to remain in streets until the regime falls. Meanwhile, Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi said people are free to protest but violence would not be tolerated. In a televised speech, he announced a number of austerity measures including reduction in salaries of lawmakers and presidency. In Lebanon, President Michel Aoun says he is ready for a dialogue with protesters to help save the country from collapse. In an address to the nation on promise to fight corruption and assured protesters that their shouts will not be wasted. But he said the system could not be changed by crowding public spaces. Protesters rejected the president's speech and said their demand is the resignation of the government. Protests in Lebanon started last week over the increase in tax on phone calls. The demonstration was the biggest seen in Lebanon since 2005. The United Nations says it will send a special mission to probe human rights abuses during the ongoing anti-government protests in Chile. At least 18 people have been killed in the protests since they began last week. The protests were sparked by a rise in metro prices but grew bigger as thousands took the, to the streets over austerity and inequality. President Sebastian Peñera tried to ease tensions by announcing a plan to end a state of emergency and nighttime curfews, but he failed to calm the protesters. Police have arrested over 5,000 people since the start of demonstrations. Many student groups and teachers also joined the protests, leaving the majority of the country's schools closed. UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he will give lawmakers more time to debate the Brexit deal, but only if they agree to hold elections on the 12th of December. The Prime Minister says he expects the European Union to grant a short Brexit extension until the 15th of November. He urged the Labour Party to back elections in a vote he plans to hold next week. The EU is expected to give its verdict on Brexit delay on Friday. France says it is willing to give the UK an extension for Brexit if London can explain why such a delay is justified. Meanwhile, Britain's parliament approved Johnson's non-Brexit legislative programme. President-elect of the EU Commission Ursula von der Leyen says the bloc is likely to extend the UK's Brexit deadline. During a visit to Helsinki, she said, now Britain should put forward a candidate for the European Commission. On Wednesday, EU members states back to plan to postpone Brexit beyond 31st October. It comes after Prime Minister Boris Johnson sent an extension request under a law passed by rebel MPs. Indeed, if after the 1st of November, and there are steps to do, uh, so this uh, is not a given, uh, there might be an extension and there might be, uh, and the UK is still in the European Union, then of course uh, I would ask the UK to send a commissioner. London police are aggressively pursuing investigation into the 39 dead bodies found at a lorry in Essex. Three properties in Northern Ireland have been raided while the lorry driver is under investigation for an additional 24 hours. Police says the lorry has been moved to a secure site. National Crime Agency says the scope of investigation has broadened to Ireland, Belgium and China. The process of post-mortem examinations of the dead bodies is taking place. Essex Police said it is the largest murder investigation in the force's history. Earlier, British police said all the 39 people found dead are believed to be Chinese. China's ambassador to the UK, Liu Xiaoming, said the embassy is in contact with the UK police. In Azerbaijan, over two dozen heads of state and governments have arrived to attend the 18th Non-Aligned Movement Summit today. Pakistan's President Arif Arif Alvi was received at the airport by the Deputy Prime Minister of Azerbaijan, Ali Ahmedov. 
The NAM summit is likely to focus on major reforms in the organization's structure, direction and functions. On Thursday, a ministerial meeting ahead of the summit identified terrorism as a threat to global development. The 120-member group makes up for 55% of the world's population. NAM countries possess 75% of the world's oil reserves and 50% of its gas. Meanwhile, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will miss the summit a second time in a row. A worker of opposition party Muslim League has been stabbed to death in India's southeastern Kerala state. Police say 36-year-old man Mohammed Ishaq was attacked on his way back from the local mosque. Police confirmed the ongoing clashes between Congress-led United Democratic Front and Communist Party of India in recent months. CPIM District Committee has denied any involvement in the incident. Heavy contingents of police have been deployed after the Muslim League called for a shutdown in the district of Malapuram today. In Bangladesh, 16 people have been sentenced to death for the murder of a teenage girl who refused to withdraw a sexual harassment complaint. The principal of a religious school was among those given capital punishment. The killers set the victim on fire on the roof of a school in April in southeastern district of Fanny. Police said the murder was carried out on the principal's order. The defense lawyer said his clients will challenge the verdict in the high court. The death sparked public outrage and mass demonstrations calling for the killers to be punished. And we'll take a quick short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Raging fires are forcing mass evacuations from the U.S. state of California for the second consecutive year. 25 million Californians have been put on fire warning by state authorities. Winds fuel the blaze that has scorched over 10,000 acres of land in Northern California. Rescue agencies say the fire is spreading further. Half a million residents are without power after Pacific Gas and Electric got transmission to prevent further uh, wildfires. Government officials say the fire is now moving some 75 miles north of San Francisco. California is still recovering from wildfires last year that killed about 100 people. Migrants in Bosnia are waiting to be relocated as temperatures drop. Hundreds of migrants are bracing for the winter. More details in this report. In Bosnia, a tent city builds on a former garbage landfill, hosts hundreds of migrants. There is no water for the inhabitants and the area is surrounded by woods. Four kilometers, water problem. To survive, residents must carry plastic bottles to a nearby village and ask locals for water. But the migrants' growing numbers is frustrating the settlers. Jungle camp. No good. Mm. Problem. Okay. Water, no. Okay. Fruit, no. Okay. Money, no. Uh, city, city, go. Police problem. Uh, go, Croatia. Slovenia problem. Lack of food, water, and medicines is making the situation worse. I'm not an uh, uh, animal, I'm human. Cameraman, uh, I'm here in last uh, the three months. Cameraman coming, uh, uh, human rights coming, but uh, no, no, not, uh, oh, no, okay. No response. Why? Bosnian authorities say they want to move the camp before winter hits, but have been unable to agree on a new location. Here the situation must become absurd so that we can finally start to solve it, so that everyone can start doing their job. The UN also criticized the camp's location, calling it inappropriate and inadequate. While the Red Cross has criticized Bosnian authorities, for failing to provide medical facilities. It is good to bring water to collect garbage, but who will take care of the large number of migrants with scabies, tuberculosis and hepatitis? The Council of Europe Commissioner for Human Rights denigrated the camp's deplorable conditions and warned that the situation will be worse in winter. 
The international community is pushing Bosnian authorities to relocate the camp, which the migrants call a jungle. In New York, a 101-story tall outdoor observation deck known as EDGE is set to open in Manhattan. The sky-high deck offers a sweeping bird's-eye view of the city and the Atlantic Ocean as far as 80 miles away. More in this report. Now you can walk into the sky and embrace unobstructed panoramic views of the New York City like never before. Thrill seekers also have a chance to take dizzying selfies from a 101-story high Hudson Yards complex. Slated glass barriers allow visitors to lean over the city and a glass floor lets them see below. It amazes me that from one spot I can see the Statue of Liberty all the way around the Central Park and every icon that you've always read about, that you know about, that you want to see. And from here, you can see it all in one spot. Constructing the deck was a tremendous feat of engineering. Engineering-wise, it's amazing. And, you know, I give the engineers credit for being able to think of how you can actually build this that's just sticking out over the city this high up in the air. Edge joins similar decks on New York City's Empire State Building, World Trade Center, and the Rockefeller Center. It will open to public on March 11, 2020. Now bringing you the latest from the business world, Asian shares have inched up amid modest trading as investors sought direction in a rare quiet news day on the geopolitical front. Tracking small gains in world markets as positive earnings offset economic growth concerns the regional markets show modest trends. China's blue chips were up fractionally while Hong Kong's Hang Seng slid almost half a percent. Shares in South Korea were also treading water. The Australian shares added over half a percent. Japan's Nikkei too ticked up marginally. On Wall Street, strong quarterly results from Microsoft and PayPal helped lift the Nasdaq almost 1%. The S&P 500 also rose, but the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished 0.11% lower. Top U.S. and China's officials will resume talks today in their latest attempt to calm a nearly 16-month trade row. U.S.-China trade war has been rolling roiling financial markets, disrupting supply chains and slowing global economic growth. U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin will talk to China's Vice Premier Liu He on the phone. The two sides are working to try to agree on a text for a phase one trade agreement announced by U.S. President Donald Trump. Trump has hinted that he could sign the phase one agreement with China's President Xi Jinping next month at a summit in Chile. Amazon's profits have decreased for the first time in two years. The online retailer's shares have fallen by 7% in extended trading. Amazon has also lowered its forecast for the upcoming holiday season. Its third quarter earnings are $4.23 a share compared with $5.75 a year earlier. Operating expenses during the third quarter climbed by 26%. CEO Jeff Bezos says Prime subscribers had placed orders for one-day delivery, which increased costs. And now let's take a look what the weather is like in the world today. For latest updates, you may follow us on social media at Indus.news.